that is about scr full wave rectification and uh, i will share the screen and we will do this experiment step by step together uh, i guess it's already on my screen so I guess my screen is visible to you now, and let's start this experiment. So, uh, as always, you can start another instance of Proteus also. It's already running now uh, in my case. So you have to go to the file new. It will start the wizard. and then click next 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 and finish now today we are not going to use the generator because if you remember the full wave rectifier circuit uh, we need a ac 230 volt 50 hertz supply so i will go to the place component and look for uh, source AC. So uh, it should give me somewhere around V sign, which is a sine wave AC source voltage. Click OK. Place that component. Double click on it. Now, typically your wall frequency around 230 volts. So that's why I set it to 230 volts and frequency to 50 hertz. So this is the supply we have to take. Next thing, uh, the single step transformer so you can write transformer and you will come to this uh, you choose this simple transformer to p2s and then place it over here now there is no number of windings given so we have to tune the transformer based on the uh, ratio so here you have to change this one uh, to I guess 0 0.053. Let me check in the write up. Yeah, excellent for write up. I will share you with you in the classroom. So the yeah, 0 0.053. So on the transformer side, uh, you have to change the lower value to 0 0.05 Henry. Click OK. So now this will step down your output voltage. Next thing is we want to create a bridge rectifier. Uh, for that we need a SCR because it's a controlled rectifier. So uh, a specific type of SCR we are going to use, which is 2N6564. So you, you should select for 2N6564 and it will point out the particular SCR to you. Click OK, place that component, right click and rotate that component by 180 degrees so that all SCRs are looking upwards. Now, uh, if you want to make four copies of it, just select the area around it, right click and say block copy or you can paste four SCRs, not an issue. So you can place one, two, three and four SCRs together. Next thing what you have to do is uh, simply connect them together. So a rectangle is to be formed uh, using these SCRs. I'm just doing that. Okay, so they are connected now. Uh, now if you want to come out of the selection, click outside. Then you have to connect your input to one to this side and uh, other one on the other side. So this is your input signal given. Uh, we need a load resistor. So again, go to the place component. Here uh, we need this special kind of load, which is a uh, inductive and resistive load. So you can type 10 watt 5 
R that is 5 ohm 10 watt resistor. So you can type in keywords 10 watt. It will bring all 10 watt resistors and select 5R6. So uh, look for that particular 5R6 value and click OK. So this is my load resistance. I will just sweep it. So load resistance is there. Now you have to connect it to the top and the other end to the bottom. So this becomes my R load. Now we also need a RL load. So that L is 1 milli Henry. Uh, for the placing of L, you go to the place component, select for inductor. Now the first inductor you will get is one with the dot on it. We need the second one again a generic inductor. Click OK and place it again. Rotate it. Just for a. Better. Visualization. So whenever we want to connect RL, we will de delete this line and connect these two. I will show that in a moment. Then next thing is we want to see the output waveforms. So go to the instruments, select oscilloscope and place that oscilloscope somewhere here. And uh, any channel, let's say channel A, you connected the output and the other end of the CRO should be grounded. So you have to go to the virtual ground, select the ground terminal and place it here. So this becomes your ground and the other end becomes your CRO. Now the last thing required is you should trigger U1 and U4 together during positive half cycle and U3 and U2 together during negative half cycle. So for triggering you have to go to the uh, generators again. In the generator you look for a pulse generator and place two of them, one on the top, one on the bottom. And next thing you have to do is connect this pulse generator to the respective SCRs. So you have to remember the U4 goes with U1. Now this number might vary for you. And then other thing is uh, U2 goes with U3. So this is the connection. Now we have to set the pulses. So pulse setup is already given in the write up. You can come to the write up and check for the pulse setup. So pulse setup high voltage is 10 volt. Start seconds is 3 milliseconds. Now this you have to vary throughout the experiment. Rise time 500 nano, fall time 500 nano, percentage pulse width 2 and 50. This is for the top pulse. So I will uh, set that value. The first thing you have to set this to 10 volts, then this to 3 milli, this to 5 nano, again 5 nano, percentage of pulse to 2% and frequency is same as your input. So these are the settings you have to do, which are already given in the write-up. You can just verify them. Uh, so 2% 50 hertz 3 milliseconds on the other side the other pulse is delayed by 10 milliseconds because total duration is 20 milliseconds so half duration or phase shift of 180 is caused by adding a delay of 10 milliseconds so that is what we are going to do now so come to the proteus again uh, here you have to double click Pulse high width goes to 10. Start is 13 milliseconds. Uh, this is fine nano. Again, this is also fine nano. Percentage 2 and frequency 50. Now, uh, the overall experiment is you change this 3 seconds. That is, this is 10 plus 3 and the above is only 3. 
So you keep on varying this from one second, two second, three second, four second, five second. See how the output waveform changes. Now, when you make this one too, you can keep this 13 also, but you ideally you should make this also 12 so that you see a, a uniform waveform onto your CRO. And now when you run it, you should see the output. Uh, since output is very high in voltage, you can just reduce down the voltage level. So now you can see a full wave rectified signal with a control. Now this control is we are turning it off for three seconds. So that's why for three milliseconds, there is no signal. Then the remaining cycle is passed. Again, for three milliseconds, there is no signal. So if you go to your observation tables in the write-up, you have to uh, fill this value T in millisecond. You can start with one, three, and five milliseconds. And you have to repeat the same experiment with um, one, three, five milliseconds, but with RL load. So how to do that RL load? Uh, I will explain you now. So this is about the readings. You can stop the simulation. From the CRO, you only have to measure the time duration and the amplitude. And next thing, what happens when you connect a RL load? I just deleted that wire and connected R and L in series. And if you see now, the output will look same, but there will be a spikes at the starting and spikes at the ending. Okay. So that is because of the inductive load, which causes a lag, which avoids the turning off of SCR even till a small portion of negative cycle and during the first initial pulse at the positive cycle. So from the CRO, you have to take measurements for time axis. So you can extend, expand your time axis using this knob, measure the number of division, one, two, three, four, five, so on, and then multiply it with 0.5 milliseconds. So that becomes your one reading in time. And second is you need to measure this VP. Uh, so VP can be measured with the help of volts per division knob. So you can uh, measure number of uh, lines in a vertical domain. And in the reading, you have to enter the triggering angle. So how to calculate this particular triggering angle from T in milliseconds? So that you have to do a calculation. So I will show you to you on the paint, I guess. I think I will just close the paint. So for calculation purpose, uh, this was your original waveform, which goes like this. Uh, this was your full wave rectified waveform without any control. Now with control, what you are getting is something like this with only R load. So now you can partially allow the wave to go through. And this is what you call small t, which you are measuring from the uh, CRO. So this small t, is the time duration and total t is 1 upon 50 hertz that is not going to change so total t will be 20 milliseconds i guess so small t upon capital t is same as phase angle alpha upon 360 okay and once you calculate this firing angle alpha by cross multiplying because t is known to you that you have measured from cro capital t is 1 by f or you can still measure it from cro this is your capital T. And then uh, since this uh, angle calculation is in degrees, we are dividing it by 360. If it is in radians, you have to divide it by 2 pi. So it depends on what mode of calculator you are using. Once you do that, you have to find the alpha using the formula which I told you. Now this T is from the CRO. And the T you actually taken while uh, delaying is your uh, actual load value calculation by theory or calculation. Whereas this T from the CRO is what you are seeing. And uh, that will both formulas will lead you to this point where you know uh, VO is equal to VM by pi 1 plus cos alpha and VM is already known to you. Okay. So this is how you can calculate theoretical and practical values. Uh, if you just want to measure a VM, you can disconnect the entire circuit. Uh, if you just want to know what is the secondary voltage, uh, because this uh, theoretical readings needs a VM reading, the, that will be same again. But if you want to cross verify, you can do that, but just by disconnect one of the 
disconnect one of the this connection delete wire okay i just delete this and now connect the cro directly to the secondary and the other end to the ground so by doing this you can actually measure what is the secondary voltage on channel b and you can also find out the frequency and the voltage for this particular signal so this is the entire experiment uh, i will stop recording now and if you have any doubts you can ask me